Hey guys, welcome back to the video series on graphing functions. In this video, I'm going to go through how to sketch a rectangular hyperbola. It's very important that you know how to sketch these graphs as hyperbola questions have come up quite often in the exams. Usually in the exam 1, it's worth 3 marks. So you need to know how to quickly sketch these graphs and also be able to find the correct vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Starting off with the basic hyperbola, the rule is going to be y is equal to 1 on x. And its graph is going to look like this. Notice the graph lies on the first and the third quadrant. This is a positive hyperbola. A negative hyperbola is going to have the rule y is equal to minus 1 on x. And its graph is going to look something like this. Where the graph lies on the second and the fourth quadrant. For the basic hyperbola, the vertical asymptote is going to be the line x is equal to 0. And the horizontal asymptote is going to be the line y is equal to 0. And we show this by drawing dotted lines. In general, our hyperbola rule will be in the form y is equal to a on x minus h plus k. Where the value of a will dilate the graph, the value of h will tell us where the vertical asymptote is, and the value of k will tell us where the horizontal asymptote is. Now, here are the four steps that you need to take when you're sketching a hyperbola graph. The first step is to determine whether it's going to be a positive or a negative hyperbola. The second step is to work out the equation of the vertical and the horizontal asymptote. The third step is to find the x and y intercepts, if there are going to be any. And the last step is to label these features on the axes and then sketch the graph. Cool. Now that we know the basics, let's get into some examples. So we've got sketch each of the following, clearly showing the position of the asymptotes and the intercepts with the axes. Part A. Y is equal to 1 on x plus 3. Starting with the first step, we want to determine whether this is going to be a positive or a negative. Looking at the rule, this is going to be a positive. And so we know that the graph is going to lie on the first and the third quadrant. For the second step, we need to work out the vertical and the horizontal asymptote. To work out the vertical asymptote, we let the denominator equal to 0 and then solve for x. And so if we let x plus 3 equal 0, solving for x, x is equal to minus 3. And so the vertical asymptote is going to be the line x is equal to minus 3. The horizontal asymptote is going to be the constant that's added to the fraction part of the function. And so for part A, there's no constant added. And so the horizontal asymptote is just going to be the line y is equal to 0. Next, we need to work out the x and y intercepts. To work out the y intercept, we let x is equal to 0 and then solve for y. And so if we let x is equal to 0, y is going to be 1 on 3. And so the y-intercept is going to be 1 on 3. For the x-intercept, we let y is equal to 0 and then solve for x. And so if we let y is equal to 0, we're going to get 0 is equal to 1 on x plus 3. And so solving for x, if we multiply both sides by x plus 3, we're going to get 0 is equal to 1. Which doesn't make sense. And so therefore, there's no x-intercepts. And we know this is true because the horizontal asymptote is the line y is equal to 0. And the last step is to label these features on the axes and then sketch the graph. And now drawing the x-axis, we start by drawing a dotted line for the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes. And then we need to mark in the x and y intercepts. For this question, we only have the y intercept. And we know that the graph should be in the first and the third quadrant. And so we just sketch the graph giving us the graph of y equals 1 on x plus 3. Part b, y equals 6 on 1 minus x minus 3. So for the first part, we want to determine whether this is positive or negative. And since we've got the negative here, this is going to be a negative hyperbola. And so the graph of this function is going to lie in the second quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. And now for the vertical asymptote, we let the denominator equals 0 and then solve for x. And so moving x to the right hand side, we're going to get 1 is equal to x, which means x is equal to 1. And so therefore, the vertical asymptote is going to be the line x is equal to 1. The horizontal asymptote is just going to be the constant, which is minus 3. And so the horizontal asymptote is going to be the line y is equal to minus 3. And now the y-intercept, we're going to let x is equal to 0. And so y is going to be 6 on 1 minus 0, which is the same as 6 on 1, which is 6 minus 3. And this is equal to 3. And so the y-intercept is going to be 3. And for the x-intercept, 
we let y is equal to 0 and then solve for x. And so we're going to get 6 over 1 minus x minus 3 is equal to 0. Taking minus 3 to the other side, we're going to get 6 over 1 minus x is equal to 3. Multiplying both sides by 1 minus x, we're going to get 6 is equal to 3 times 1 minus x. Expanding the right hand side, we're going to get 6 is equal to 3 minus 3x. And then solving for x, 3x is going to equal 3 minus 6, which is minus 3, and so x is equal to minus 1. And so the x-intercept is going to be minus 1. And finally, we label all these features on the axes and then sketch the graph. And so drawing the axes, and now we need to draw the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes with a dotted line. Next, we need to mark in the x and y intercepts, and now we just connect the dots. Remember, the graph is going to be on the second and in the fourth quadrant giving us the graph of y equals 6 on 1 minus x minus 3. Part C, y equals 1 on 2x plus 3 plus 4. So the first thing again, we want to know whether this is positive or negative. So this is going to be a positive hyperbola. And so its graph is going to be in the first and in the third quadrant. We then want the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes and so for the vertical asymptote, we let the denominator 2x plus 3 equals 0 and then solve for x. And so 2x is going to be minus 3. Solving for x is going to be minus 3 on 2. And so the vertical asymptote is going to be the line x is equal to minus 3 on 2. The horizontal asymptote is just going to be the constant. And so this is going to be the line y is equal to 4. Now we need to work out the y-intercept. And so we let x is equal to 0 and solve for y. And so this is going to be y is equal to 1 on 3 plus 4, which is equal to 4 and a third. And so the y-intercept is going to be 4 and a third. And for the x-intercept, we let y is equal to 0. And so we're going to get 1 on 2x plus 3 plus 4 is equal to 0. Moving the 4 to the other side, we're going to get 1 on 2x plus 3 is equal to minus 4. Multiplying both sides by 2x plus 3, we're going to get 1 is equal to minus 4 times 2x plus 3. And so expanding the brackets, this is going to be minus 8x minus 12. And so this is going to be 13 is equal to minus 8x, which means x is equal to minus 13 on 8. And now we label all these features on the axes and then sketch the graph. And so in drawing the x and y axes, we label the asymptotes with the dotted lines, we mark the x and y intercepts, and we know that the graph should be in the first and the third quadrant, and so we just sketch the graph. Giving us the graph of y is equal to 1 on 2x plus 3 plus 4. And that's it for these questions. I hope you found it useful, and if you did, share it with your friends. You can comment below if you have any questions. Now that you know the steps on how to sketch a hyperbola, you should be pretty comfortable answering the tech free exam questions. So log into the Maths Methods Club and from the main topic select Functions and Graphs. And from the subtopic select Power Functions. And then from the question type select Tech Free. With the exception of the 2019 Northern Hemisphere question, you should be able to answer the other questions and hopefully get full marks. See how you go. Good luck and I'll see you guys in the next video.